Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites, apologize! No. Anyway, welcome to Season 4 of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Venom Vlog. And today I'm actually shifted over here to my computer because there's going to be a lot of information that I was like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to remember all this. There's a couple people's names in here. Um, there's an article I wanted to go over. And then also, uh, you know, also something from Central Casting that I thought was kind of neat that would add to the discussion. And so what we're going to talk about today is, is stand-ins. And, uh, and the reason I'm bringing up stand-ins is because uh, I've been seeing a couple people post that they're going to be stand-ins from the movie, or at least one or two people that said they did stand-in work for the Venom 2 movie. Um, we're only going to mention one or two here. One of them comes from IMDb. Another one comes from Instagram. And uh, and it made me you know, start uh, thinking about previous conversations we had. I know Eddie's mullet and a couple other people had theories that uh, Naomi Harris, who has been cast in the movie but we don't know what exactly what role a lot of people were rumoring shriek and i was kind of leaning that she was probably going to play shriek in this movie uh, as well because i'm like well if that's the rumors and that's what's going around uh and it's coming from major sources that is you know probably going to be the situation but then some people were like well what if she's not shriek what if she's playing dr ashley kafka what if she's playing a different character um i think even eddie's mullet said what if she's playing dr kafka who then becomes shriek and they just kind of change the origin of the character i mean that's possible too you know uh anything's possible really they got to do what's best for the story but uh but yeah so naomi harris it seems like though that she's going to be playing shriek and we're going to get a non-symbiote threat in this movie which i'm excited for because that helps tie into the bigger picture you know like the the spider-man universe morbius if you start bringing in other threats and show that it's not just a symbiote based threat world uh then venom can easier you know in, in an easier way slip into those other worlds and you know they can all kind of share one space so um so yeah i'm kind of intrigued by the idea of naomi Paris, uh, harris playing uh shriek so you know, and she's such a chameleon i mean like i was looking through her resume and i was like wow i forgot we talked about this before you know i was like i remember her from 28 days later and that's when i kind of first was exposed to her but she was in like uh you know collateral beauty i have a list of movies here uh, obviously james bond she plays money penny um she was in uh uh you know uh, what was it jack sparrow the the pirates of the caribbean um she plays like the voodoo lady i can't remember her character's name um, but, uh, but she was also in Rampage with, uh, The Rock, you know, I was like, oh man, that was her. Uh, yeah. And so she, and she was in Moonlight, which she was fantastic in and our kind of traitor and with, uh, Ewan McGregor. So yeah, she's done a lot of great stuff. She's a, she's a very talented actress and I'm so excited to see her in this movie. So again, we were kind of, you know, confused, like, well, is she really playing Shriek or it just says rumored. If you go to INDB, it just says rumored. So uh, this, I feel like, kind of confirms that a little bit, or at least confirms Shriek is in the movie, uh, because we have uh, Johanna Thea, and she is a, a young lady who's a writer and actress as well, and she is a, she was a stand-in for Shriek. This was updated on, on the IMDb recently um, under, like, miscellaneous crew or something like that, or additional crew or something. And so, yeah, sometimes I like to peruse that section because I like to see who they add in there. Sometimes they add second unit people and, you know, and, and coordinators of different kinds. And so I was kind of seeing who they would add. So Johanna uh, Thea, she stand in, uh, she's a stand-in for Shriek. Uh, that's, well, that's what it says on IMDb. So, okay, I'm like, all right, then she might be the stand-in for Naomi Harris. And, uh, and so I'm like, so that might mean that Naomi Harris is also uh, Shriek in the movie. So I'm sure that's already kind of confirmed. This isn't me trying to connect those dots and say, confirmed, you know, this. I'm just saying, like, I saw the stand-in for Shriek thing, and I said, you know what, that's an interesting topic to talk about. Not just her standing in for Shriek and, poss you know, kind of confirming that character in the movie, but, uh, but more or less what a stand-in is, because I know what a stand-in is but not to the fullest extent. You know, I've had a friend who did stand and work before and I kind of knew what he did. And I kind of, I mean, the obvious is like, oh, they just stand in for the actor, but there's like different layers of it, of course, right? It's it's uh, it's not just that sometimes. Uh, sometimes you can have a stand in where the the stand in looks nothing like the the actual actor because they're just, they just need someone physically there to, uh, you know, to frame a shot or something. But then you have, you know, we need someone with similar uh, complexity, similar body type, similar uh, bone structure on their face, uh, uh, skin color, whatever, like a uh, hair type, you know, or, or we can at least match the hair type. Sometimes we need that so we can figure out lighting and stuff. And we, and we can make sure that uh, when the actors show up on the day when they're filming, we already have the scene lit for someone who is, you know, very similar to them so that all we have to do is make minor tweaks. 
again, just saving on that time, you know? Uh, so I thought that was interesting. I was like, oh, this is, those are layers I didn't know about before. So I thought we could run, you know, kind of go down a spiral real quick of stand-ins. Um, I did see this young man named uh, Sean Connick, I think on Instagram. Um, I think he goes by Connick Sean, but uh, he posted a picture of him and Tom Hardy. And he was like, yeah, and this was in June. He was like, hey, th you know, so great to work with this guy. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? Like, this is June. How are you working with him? And he's like, well, I, I didn't work with him now, but I kind of was a stand in for him on Venom. Um, so I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, and, and, you know, he was just, you know, you know, being like, hey, I'm a fan. And this was, this was cool to meet the guy. And he's, you know, it looks like this young man is an actor and he's, you know, trying to break in. Um, and so that was, that's pretty cool. You know, like, it's cool to see these younger people, you know, like uh, starting out, you know, because who knows, we may see Sean in an action movie one day, uh, Johanna Thea, we may see her in something, you know, major one day too. So uh, it's just cool to talk about these uh, people and these, these actors and what they do. Um, because you never know where they'll pop up, you know, in the future, in future movies. So, uh, so yeah, so Sean posted a cool picture of him and Tom, you know, just, just not on the set. I don't think just out in, you know, San Francisco when they were filming there. Um, kind of like I did when I ran into Tom at San Francisco. So, uh, so yeah, really cool. But then as I was like going down that spiral, like I said, of uh, stand-ins, I started coming across things. I was like, you know, what exactly is a stand-in and, and who is someone who's only done stand-in work? Like, is there an article out there about anyone? So I did find one on Radio Times uh, about Tim Wilson, uh, who served as a stand-in and background actor for 30 years, and yet he still struggles to make enough money to cover his medical insurance each year, they say. Um, that's crazy. So I have a picture of him pop up right here. Um, but uh, that's crazy. I was thinking about that, that, you know, that you could do that much work and, and, and still kind of struggle in that way. But that is, I mean, in, you know, LA is an industry town and it's a tough town to live in for sure. I've been there, you know, 13 years uh, and then now moved back to Florida because it's tough out there. I mean, everything is so expensive. And even if minimum wage goes up or these rates go up for some of these actors or stand-ins, it's still sometimes not enough because you have, because you're freelance too. So you have to constantly go out there and try to get more work. And it's, it's, a it's can be very tough, man. So I got to give Tim credit here for uh, being so, uh, you know, you know, aggressive with it for 30 years um yeah so uh tim wilson just a former actor turned professional stand-in was spent 30 years as part of the film and television industry unheralded second team is you know kind of what they call it sometimes because uh, that usually will have a uh you know first team second team or unit you know second unit you know that could be with that as well um and over the course of his career he worked with a lot of great people philip seymour hoffman um you know sean penn steve buscemi uh, john hurt just the list goes on this guy has had a great a great career it looks like and uh, and it says what you know uh he says it's a privilege uh he says to uh, be on these sets, stand and work is both extremely tedious and extremely interesting. And I've heard that about stand and work. It's a, it's literally a lot of standing around, <laughs> like, like no joke. Like there, you, people are tweaking stuff. They'll put, call you in. They'll have you stand. Then they'll say, you like, you know what? You know, step away for a second. We're gonna do this and this. We don't want to drop anything on you. All right, go back in your position. Let's, fit, you know, it's a lot of work. And sometimes you work. You're supposed to work eight hours a day. Um, but, uh, sometimes you go over that and if you do, you get, you know, paid overtime. Um, so, and that's what he says here. He's like, it's all about that overtime. He's like, if you can get overtime a lot, then, uh, chances are, you know, you'll make a pretty, you know, at least you'll make more money, uh, throughout the year. But I think they said on average, it's about $200 a day to do stand in work and you may only work eight hours or you may go over that, you know, um, and you get a lunch, I think too. I think they include a lunch. So, uh, so yeah, it was like, it was interesting him, him talk about this. It says, what does a stand-in do? He says, a stand-in's job is to work with the camera and lighting departments and setting up each individual shot and each scene. Uh, we take the place of the principal actors for blocking, uh, which is working out an actor's move in relation to the camera and lighting setups. Um, everything a stand-in does is off screen when anyone's head or another part of the body is used to cheat an actor, um, it's known as a photo double work. Um, I've often been a photo double for the back of an actor's head, but most of the time it's hand doubling for when the actor is on the phone or opening, closing doors and switching off lights. I mean, that's the thing is people, when they, when you think about what an editor has to go through when they're siphoning through all these footages, you know, it's like all this footage and you have these, uh, you know, directors and people, second unit, first unit, filming these things, sometimes a hand picking up a phone is not, you know, Tom Hardy's hand. It's not Naomi Harris's hand. You know, in Naomi Harris's case, they might have Johanna Thea, you know, pick up the phone if she's there on the day when they need that done. So it's just, it's neat, all these little elements that come together to make a movie. It's like uh, making a movie is like, that's why I try to be fair when, even when a movie I don't like, um, it's like, I try to be fair because I know 
how much work goes into it. That's one of my favorite things we do on the show sometimes is that we talk about the inner workings of a movie and how things are done. And I thought giving stand-ins a little bit of shine right now, you know, kind of, you know, uh, shout them out was something we should do because, uh, you know, it is hard work to stay. I mean, I, you know, at Lego, I stood for eight hours a day um, and sometimes more if I had to work a double shift or, you know, help someone out or something. Um, it, you know, in my new job at, you know, SeaWorld, I'm going to be standing a lot too. So, uh, so yeah, it, it, it can be, uh, it, you know, tedious and it's a lot to do, but, uh, but, you know, seeing that they only make 200 bucks a day sometimes, it's kind of a bummer because I've been a PA before and a PA will make more than that. Granted, a PA is, you know, typically doing a lot more than just standing around. They're working, they're taking out trash, they're doing all, you know, running, getting uh, groceries or, or picking people up at the airport or whatever it needs to be, depending if they're a transportation PA or a set PA or whatever. So it's like they're doing a little bit more, sure, so they probably should get paid more. But um, but still, it's like, you know, in L.A., if you work, you know, four days as a stand-in, and you make 800 bucks and maybe one of those days you went into overtime so that's 900 bucks maybe uh let's i'm just being generous that ain't paying your rent in la uh, chances are it's not paying your rent it's probably not even paying uh it probably might pay most of your rent if you live in a studio apartment like i did for like 1200 bucks a month um you know so now i, I pay 1200 and i live in a you know much bigger place uh, in florida but out in la 1200 bucks you know gets you a, a studio apartment that's the size of this bedroom pretty much and that that's it um and I love the quote here. It says, there are no small roles, only small paychecks. <laughs> I thought that was funny. So anyway, yeah, I, I, that's just neat. You know, um, you know, you can, how people, there's like this article talks about how people get into, to, uh, you know, stand in work and doing in TV and movie and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's just neat. It's just neat to hear about this profession of people who, um, who do it. And this guy made a career out of it. He was like, you know what? I like this. Like I get to stand in. Sometimes I get to be the back of an actor's head or an actor's hand. Uh, but mostly, you know, it's just me. And I'm sure, you know, he probably gets a thrill out of watching a movie and being like, Hey, that's my hand. You know, telling a friend like that's my hand. I picked up that gun or whatever, <laughs> you know? So, uh, I don't know. I just think this is neat. I, I like talking about this kind of stuff. And and this other article I found on Central Casting, um, who, you know, sometimes you know, they give information out about casting, uh, but also sometimes help out with casting. I think I think Central Casting I've heard about before, and I feel like they're an agency that help, you know, that cast people. Um, but this article written on Central Casting, uh, the website, is by Megan uh, Dubitsky, and uh, this came out of May of this year. Um, so this is a pretty recent article. And it talks about uh, 16 terms that stand-ins need to know if they're going to take a career stand-in. So first, it's second team. Uh, TV and film stand-ins are called the second team, while principal actors make up the first team. So when they call in the second team, that means they want the stand-ins to come in. Um, and when they call in, you know, the, the first team, that's like, you know, Naomi Harris and Tom Hardy. That's the main actors, right? Uh, so that's pretty neat. So again, terms I didn't really uh, know. So the second thing on the list is utility stand-in. And that is what I was talking about earlier. That's someone who's brought in to be used for lighting and camera uh, rehearsals. And they may stand in for the actors of varying looks, genders, and ethnicities. So this is like the person who might, you know, be cast that looks similar to the lead actor or actress. Uh, so they'll, they'll be brought in as a stand-in because they look similar or they're similar height or similar shape or whatever. And they're close enough to where they can go, okay, we can light this person and that'll be fairly close to how we're going to like the main actors when they show up and so we can set it all up do the lighting and then we can tell them to leave and then the main actor will come in and they can just start reading their lines and doing their their scene so that's the kind of thing it is it's like you know the main actors a lot of times they just have to be in the moment they have they have to you know think about their lines they have a lot on their mind and a lot of weight on their shoulders they don't want to waste any of the crew's time or anyone else's time so they want to be able to come in do their scene, do it well, you know, maybe do a, a couple takes if they need to, and then just get it down and, and leave. And that's, that's the, you know, the bulk of it. That's what you want to happen in a perfect world. That's what people come in, they're professional, they show up on time, they do their lines, they do everything. But in preparation for that, you need to do things like stand-ins and lighting and all that stuff. So yeah, that's kind of what utility stand-in is. They come in and help the utility crews who do lighting and stuff like that. And you know, that's, so that's pretty neat. Um, there's also the single camera stand-in, uh, which is a must often match. Uh, they must often match the principal actor and height, build, and hair color. So that's like you know, very specific. They have to look even closer to the main actor or actress than even the utility stand-in sometimes. Um, or it could be the same person, could do both, I think, in some cases. 
Um, there's the multi-camera stand-in, which refers to a stand-in on multi-camera production. So like a TV show typically, like we'll have a multi-camera setup like Big Bang Theory or, you know, shows like that, uh, typically sitcoms, they'll have, you know, th uh, three camera setup usually, um, or maybe sometimes more or less, uh, you know, it depends on the show. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so you'll have a stand-in coming in for a multi-camera stand-in. Uh, you have upstage, which if you're facing the camera or the audience, as it were, uh, this is the area behind you. So if you're, you know, facing, if you're like on an SNL show and there's a crowd back there, or if you're just not and you're on a soundstage and there's the crew in front of you, then behind you is upstage, you know, because you're kind of looking at it from their perspective. So when they go move upstage, that means, you know, if you're facing them, move back. If your back is towards them, that means move forward, obviously. So upstage is further away from them. Um, and downstage, obviously, is closer to them. Uh, so you would move closer to the front of the set. Uh, there's stage left. So when you're facing the camera, this is the area to your left. So when they say, you know, if you're facing them, they go, go upstage, that's back. And, uh, and they say, go, you know, downstage, that's forward if you're facing them. But if you're facing them and they say stage left, that is your left. Um, and then also stage right is your right uh, when you're facing the camera. Um, so that's kind of cool. And then there's camera left, which is the reverse of that. So when they say camera left, that means you're right. And if they say uh, camera right, that means you're left. <laughs> yeah, so these are terms that if you're going to be a stand-in, you should kind of just familiarize yourself with. And I'll put a link to this down below for anyone who is interested in that kind of work. You know, if you are and you get a gig, let us know. I would love to, to you know, hear about your adventures as a stand-in. Um, then there's sides, uh, which is a miniaturized call sheet. I remember this. Uh, I've seen these before. A miniaturized call, call sheet and script pages for the scenes being shot that day, given to you by the production so you know what's happening in a scene. So if you're a stand-in, they may give you these sides, which is like a, like, you know, uh, normally a script is like, you know, a bigger sheet, eight and a half by 11 or whatever paper. This is like a, an ash can size, if you're a comic book fan. It's like a smaller digest size. Uh, and they bring it to you and you look at it and you'll flip through it and you'll be like, okay, so my character is going to do this. They might walk over here. They might do this, you know, whatever. Uh, they might say this. And they may just have you do a couple things that according to the script, just so again, so they can match lighting, make sure, you know, when you walk over here five feet, the lighting is still good um, or, you know, whatever. It's still consistent, I guess. Uh, so yeah, so that's what sides are. So make sure you know what sides are. Blocking, it, that's determining an actor's movement in the scene. So as a TV and film stand-in, it's important to take notes and pay attention to all your movements in a scene in case you have to relay them to the principal actor. So if you are a stand-in, and that's where some extra pressure comes in as a stand-in. They tell you to block a scene, so you'll go and do those steps, and you'll move a certain way, and they may go, hey, I love that you did that. That wasn't exactly scripted, or you brought that to the table. Um, that's great. Make sure, you know, Johanna Thea, make sure you tell Naomi Harris that you did that and show her what you did, so that way she can mimic that, because that worked perfect for lighting. Uh, we could hear you audio-wise perfectly, like, you know, everything worked out uh, by you doing that. So that's we want that to translate into the into the film. So uh, so yeah, sometimes you get to add a little spice to the scene as well, right? Uh, there's color cover, which is refers to wearing a wardrobe similar in color and pattern to what the principal actor will wear in the scene. So if they have you have a color cover, uh, this will help the crew with lighting and blocking the scene correctly. So again, making sure everything is consistent, whether you're moving or not, uh, you know, and because your chances are if you're talking, you might move your hand or your head. Um, but so you want to match the color of their outfit too. So again, the lighting, they can, uh, you know, uh, figure that out, you know, and work, work with you on that. Um, and you work with them on that. Uh, there's a stand-in resume, so a TV and film stand-in resume lists your stand-in experiences, so casting directors can determine if you're right for a role. Again, it's just like getting an acting gig. You know, you got to have a resume, you got to build it up, uh, build up connections, and, uh, you know, talk a lot with casting people and director, casting directors, and kind of network in a way and do a good job, show up on time, be professional, and that'll get you callbacks, you know, in most cases. And so, uh, you know, people like to work with people that are easy to work with, that are, you know, sure, you know, it's not your job to show up and be fun and charismatic or anything. Your job is to show up, be there and do what they need you to do. And if you do that, typically that could lead to more work um, for sure, especially if you want to make a 30 year career out of it, like Tim Wilson did. Um, so, uh, so your resume should uh, list the projects you worked on, how long you worked on them, whether it was a single or multicam and the actor you stood in for. So make sure all that information is on your resume and that'll help you out there. Uh, there's the private and cl slash closed rehearsal. So rehearsal for actors, director, director of photography, and first assistant director to establish initial blocking. So when they ask for a closed rehearsal or private rehearsal, that's typically where they get everyone else out and then you have the main, you know, people behind the camera there and they're going to just 
you know, do a take or two of it uh, to kind of see how it works. And they're going to rehearse it, you know, make sure uh, they're going to move the camera. They might not roll anything. They may roll stuff sometimes. They may not. But uh, for the most part, I think they're just going to follow the action, move, you know, move the camera where they need to and just kind of rehearse it, um, you know, just so they can see they have it down packed so the crew knows what to do. So that way when the cast member shows up, uh, the actual actress that or actor that's going to be in the scene, you know, the st stand in can tell them, hey, this is what I did. So boom, now the actor or actress has everything they need. They can do their part and the crew now has rehearsed it a couple times so they can do their part so that they will reduce the amount of times that they might make a mistake. And then the actress and actor is going to reduce the amount of times they might make a mistake by knowing what the stand in did. So again, it's, it's an, it's a machine, man, and it's got to move a certain way for it to be perfect. So, you know, that's why sometimes I give a pass, to, you know, to movies, uh, you know, when I think of a scene, but I, I think about stuff like this, I'm like, Oh, that's an interesting way to frame that shot. And it could be that they may have tried it another way. Um, but maybe this worked out better, you know, so that's, it's just neat. It, making movies is really neat. And then there's the marking rehearsal. It's a full rehearsal by actors for all department heads, including stand-ins. This is your first and sometimes only opportunity to take notes regarding your actor's movement in a scene. So this is marking rehearsal is very important for you to learn. Uh, this is a, a point where you definitely keep your mouth shut for the most part and just kind of observe. And you look at the body language of the actor you're playing. Uh, you look at their movements, how they walk, you know, how even their steps are or uneven their steps are. Um, you kind of follow what they're doing and you just kind of try to commit it to memory. And, uh, and then once you do, that's when, okay, all the actors clear out and we're gonna do some more stuff with the stand-ins. That way you're, you're now you're moving like Tom Hardy or you're moving like Naomi Harris and and that helps you know uh, you know the camera crew and everyone stay on point and and know how they're gonna film it so that way when Tom and Naomi come back boom they got their stuff you know so uh, and they can just not hopefully knock it out in a couple takes so uh, so yeah look at all that that's so that's a lot of information we went over uh, but I think stand and work is really neat and I had a friend who did it like I said he didn't make a 30 year career out of it like Tim Wilson here did uh, but uh, but eventually sometimes you don't I mean t you, the goal obviously is you go from being a stand in and be a background actor uh, you know hopefully get into the scene play small bit parts you know hopefully you've, you've made enough connections to where you can maybe get a speaking line here or there and then elevate your career and that's usually the the route most people try to go with that um and uh, and it's you know i wish everybody luck it you know it's a it's a hard industry for sure but look how important all these little uh positions are i mean these are things most people don't even think about they're like oh you're a stand-in nah that there's nothing to that and it's like well yeah there can be it, like you, tim said it's tedious at times and it's it can be boring you're just sitting around standing but there are times where you are, you know, have to act, you have to be professional, you have to bring things to the table. Um, there are opportunities for that. And, uh, and you obviously you go off what the director and the, the crew need and you go off what they need first. You don't just assume and insert your you know stuff in, I would say. I, I personally feel like that would probably be crossing a line a little bit. Um, but of course, if you do it, they might say, hey, I like that. Or, or you know what? you don't have to ad lib right now like let's let's do a couple for you know uh, of regular ones and then we'll spice it up you know people are willing to work with you in a lot of ways if you're um if you're patient with them so yeah i don't know and this is just neat stuff i wanted to bring it to your attention and it got us talking about the movie again talked you got us talking about shriek a little bit in the beginning looks like she's you know definitely going to be in the movie so i don't think that's a rumor anymore but i think most of us knew it wasn't a rumor anyway i felt like most of us kind of committed that uh, naomi harris was going to play shriek and i'm excited for that because I, I like seeing a non-symbiote threat in this film. And maybe we'll get a scene between her and Michelle Williams as She-Venom fighting each other, which would be awesome. Uh, but let me know what you guys think of all this, the stand-in stuff. Let me know all your comments down below. Do you know anyone who does stand-in work? Do you yourself do stand-in work? Um, is there anything you need clarified? I'll put links to all these articles that I read down below as well, and you can check them out down there. And we'll continue our conversation, as always, down there. Thanks for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.